top story questions continue tonight on what led up to a deadly shooting at a birthday party that left a legacy high school teenager dead. Thank you for joining us at 4. I'm Kirsten Joyce. And I'm Brian Loftus. Now, that shooting happened at the Platinum Hotel near Koval in Flamingo Saturday night. Victoria Saha live from the high school where the teen was a well-known athlete. Yeah, from what I learned today, 17-year-old Amari Wilson was part of the football team and part of the track team. I spoke to a few of his friends off camera who tell me he always encouraged his teammates to do better. A birthday party turns deadly near the Strip. 17-year-old Amari and Wilson was shot on a fifth-floor room of the Platinum Hotel. Metro police say on Saturday there was a party for an 18-year-old. As the night went on, uninvited guests showed up and there was an argument that led to the shooting. According to the coroner, the bullet went through Amorian's chest. He died at Sunrise Hospital. On Monday, parents of students at Legacy High were shocked to hear what happened. You just gotta make sure, you know, follow what kind of friends they're around with. You know, that's the main, and who else is, is in, in, these, uh, in these parties and stuff. It's just, that's why I got a little too overprotected of my daughter. She's the only one and, you know, seeing that, and I would never, you know, expect that to happen to anybody any other parents we did receive a letter sent out by the principal to parents informing them of a student's death i reached out to clark county school district police as well as metro police to see if there was any reason that the shooter could have been a student here but i was told that this is an ongoing investigation and that no arrests have been made Reporting live from Legacy High tonight, Victoria Saha, 8 News Now. Victoria, thank you. Now, the school did point out that grief counselors are available to students if they need them. Some other parents telling Victoria coaches were offering a safe space to students to come talk to them. I cannot believe I saw this on the news last night. Hello, sir. Are you still there? Yes, ma'am. Shalom. <clears throat> Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim. Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Yahweh Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the only true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one only true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole for the elect, and Shalom. To you sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word and truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh, Y Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much in this lesson, it's going to be entitled as, The Lord Can Make Judgment On You. Yes, the Lord can make judgment on you. Because, you know, one thing that, you know, people got to understand is that we have been brought back many times. All right. And the Lord, he always has his ways of dealing with people. All right. And like, again, it don't matter how old you are. You could be 10 years old, seven years old. You could be a newborn baby. You could be 20, 30, 40. It don't matter how old you are. The Lord will cast judgment on you. Now, that individual that got that got taken out of here, you know, you don't you don't know what type of person he was or the things that he was doing. Yeah, he was an athlete. Yeah, he played sports. Yeah, he did this. He did that. That don't mean shit in the eyes of the Lord. All right. Maybe there's things that he probably has done before he was, you know, in his past life. All right. The person who he was in the past. All right. Now, I'm not saying that individual deserves it. But what I'm saying is the Lord will cast his judgment on you. However you lived your life or however you're the one on this earth, it don't matter if you playing sports. It doesn't matter if you if you doing the things of this world that seems good in the eyes of thousands of people. In the Lord's eyes, he can see all the way down into who you are. He knows who you are. The Lord knows who you are deep down inside. He knows what type of person you are. This is why you want to fear the Lord. Because it don't matter about that, man. This is Proverbs 27 and 1. It says, boast not thyself of tomorrow. Right, boast not thyself of tomorrow. All right. You know, that 17-year-old kid he that got killed at that party, he was thinking tomorrow he was going to do this, tomorrow he was going to do that. You know, he was thinking of the things, times past, and you know, of what he'll be doing, and then later his future when he get 18, 19. And this is why, again, like the elders, Paul's great millstone say, all right, you cannot predict your future. You can't say 
what you're going to be doing in the next five years. You can't say what you're going to be doing in the next 10 years. What you're going to be doing this. Or you're going to be doing that. You're going to be doing that. You don't know. All right. You don't know. You got to live for it today. You can't live for the future. You don't know if you're going to be around in the future. That kid was only 17 years old. All right. He was only 17 years old. That individual is only 17 years old, man. He got killed. You see that? So you cannot boast of the things of tomorrow. You can't think that you're going to be doing this in the next five years, two years. You're going to be doing this by the end of the year. You don't know if you're going to be here. This is why you want to pray and thank the Lord every day. You want to thank the Lord for blessing you to live another day on the earth. He's giving you another chance to, to, to live on the earth. You know, because these bodies have expiration dates, man. It's not guaranteed for you to be alive in the next 24 hours or the next three, four, five days. You don't know. This is why we always pray to the Lord and we thank the Lord every day that he blessed us to live another day. He gave us another chance to be on this earth. This is Proverbs 27 and 1. It says, boast not thyself of tomorrow. Come on, boast not thyself of tomorrow. You can't brag about the things you're going to do tomorrow. You can't brag about the things you're going to do the next two weeks. You don't know. You know, and I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. This is why we always say, Lord willing, because it's up to the Lord. It says, for thou knowest not what what a day may bring forth. See, you don't know what a day brings forth. That kid went to a party and got killed. He didn't know he was going to go to a He didn't know he was going to go to that party and die. He didn't know that. And if he would have had the knowledge to understand or know that he was going to die, he wouldn't. I'm sure he wouldn't have went to that party. So you don't know. You don't know what your what your when your time to go is. You don't know. None of us do. So this is why you want to fear the Lord. This is Proverbs 21, 27 and one. It says, "Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth." See, and he got killed, and the person that probably killed him was probably jealous of him, because he was a you know he was a basketball player or whatever. He played football. He ran track. You know, he was a prior, a real uh, recognized guy. Everybody looked up to Because you got people that's, that's envious and jealous of other people at that around that age. 17, 16, 15. You got a lot of people that's envious and jealous of, of other people. You know, and it just, that person, you know, it just got, they got so jealous of that individual that they, they the, the spirit came on them to, to take that person out. Lord put a, put a, put a spirit on that individual, you know. This is why you want to fear the Lord, man. Proverbs 27 and 1. It says, boast not thyself of tomorrow. See, boast not thyself of tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow brings. You don't know what the next couple of hours brings. You don't know. You don't know if, if your day to go is today. You don't know. None of us know. This is why we fear the Lord. This is why we ask the Lord for mercy. All right. It says, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. See, so you don't know what the day bring forth. This is why you want to fear the Lord. You don't know if you're going to be here tomorrow. You don't know if you're going to be here the next day. You don't. You know? This is why you want to fear the Lord. Right? This is why you want to fear the Lord. Let me get that precept out. It's that precept I want. It's thinking on top of the head. Yep. Here it is right here. This is why, again, we always say, Lord willing. You know, Lord willing this, Lord willing that. Because it's up to the Lord. The Lord is the, is the whole director of this whole entire show. All right? This is his world. This is his time. All right? We're on the Lord's time. We're not on our own time. James 4 and 15. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will. So this is why we always say, Lord willing. Because you don't know when your time is. Time When your time is. Because the Lord does kill. The Lord can send the death angel after you. Yes, the Lord can send the death angel after you. Which I'm going to get out in a minute. This is why you want to fear the Lord. Because he kills. It's not Satan doing nothing. Satan is, a, is, is an angelic tool used by the Heavenly Father to, for, to do the will of the Lord. On the left hand side. Alright. Satan is in total order. James 4 and 15. For that. It says for that ye ought to say. If the Lord will. We shall live and, and do this or that. See Lord will. We always say Lord will it. Right? It's of, it's of the will of the Heavenly Father. It's of the will of the Lord. All right? So you can't, again, you can't boast and say what you're going to do tomorrow. You can't boast and say you're going to do this, you're going to do that. It's up to the Lord. It's up to the Lord. That 17-year-old did not know that he was going to be dead, that he was going to be put to death, man. He didn't know that. He didn't know that. He was thinking, you know, 
going to that party, yo, the next day I'm going to go and do this, I'm going to go and do that. You don't have assurance of your own life. You don't have assurance of your own life. That's in Deuteronomy, right? Let me get that out, man. Let me get that out. That's in Deuteronomy, man. You don't have no assurance of your own life. You don't have no assurance of your own life, man. All right? That's a curse that's upon us as a people. Right? You don't have no assurance of your life, man. It's in Deuteronomy, I believe. So like it. I'm going to get to the scriptures in a minute, though. Oops. It's in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Just want to get that out through the spirit. Deuteronomy, here it is. Yep, this is Deuteronomy 28 and 66. It says, And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Right? This is a curse that's upon us as a people. And thou shalt fear, see, and thou shalt fear day and night and shall have none assurance of thy life. All right? You don't have no assurance of your life, man. Right? And when you look up the meaning for that word assurance, which I'm going to get right now. Assurance. A positive, right? A positive declaration intended to give confidence a promise. Right? Confidence or certainty in one's own abilities, right? And when you read it, it says a positive declaration intended to give confidence a promise. It's not promise for you to live another day. It is not promise for you. You don't have assurance of your life, all right? You don't have no assurance of your life. So it's not promise for you to live another day. This is why you want to fear the Lord. Now we're going to get to the scriptures and we're going to prove to you that the Lord, he kills, man. The Lord kills. This is Deuteronomy 30, and we're going to start at verse 15. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Deuteronomy 30 and 15, it says, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. So the Lord is in control of life, good, death, and evil. The Lord is. All right? The Lord is in control of life, good, death, and evil. All right? The Lord is in control of that. All right? Verse 19, I call heaven and earth. To record this day against you, right? That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Because we have blessings and curses as Israelites. We have an everlasting covenant, right? Genesis 17 and 18, right? So when you read Genesis 17 and 18, we have an everlasting covenant. So we have blessings and curses as Israelites. Going to Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 through 28. So we have blessings and curses. And the Lord is in control of life, good, death, and evil. Right. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. All right. So the Lord, he's in control of life, good, death and evil. And the Lord can put judgment on you. The Lord can put judgment on you. Let's get out another precept because you got people that probably still won't agree with what I'm saying. First Samuel 2 and 6. It says the Lord killeth. Right. The Lord killeth. Yes, the Lord killeth. It says the Lord killeth. And make alive, right? He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. See, so the Lord kills, man. This is why you want to fear the Lord. The Lord kills. He kills and he makes alive. The Lord kills. And the Lord casts judgment on that individual. Because you don't know what, what his life was. You didn't know what he was a person about. Maybe he was a person that was a bully. He could have been a person that was a bully. I'm not speaking bad on him, you know. But I'm just saying, you don't know. You don't know what type of person he was, you know. So the Lord executed that judgment. You know, or he may have done things in his past life for the Lord to commit that judgment on him. Because, you know, we're reincarnated, right? Re means again. G means DNA. We regeneration, right? We always come back. We're brought back. You know, the Lord cast a judgment, man. We don't know. We don't know what reason why the Lord casts a judgment. The Lord just casts it, man. This is why you want to fear the Lord. You want to fear Yahweh Bashim Shai. You want to fear the Lord. And this is uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 39. This this is Deuteronomy 32 and 39. It says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no, there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. See, the Lord, he kills and he makes alive. I wound and I heal. The Lord wounds and heals. All right. The Lord make you put a, put a sickness on you, put a sickness on you. The Lord puts a plague on you. He'll put a plague on you. Right. It says, neither is there any that can deliver you out of my hand. You can't escape the judgment of the Lord. <clears throat> That's why you want to fear the Lord. This is why you want to fear Yahweh Bashi Mashai. 
Because the Lord can put judgment on you. The Lord can put judgment on you. He can take you out of here. He can kill you. The Lord can send the death angel after you. He can kill you. Yeah, that's why you want to fear the Lord. You want to fear the Lord. You're in the Lord's hands. Nobody can save you out. You can't escape the judgment of the Lord. Nobody can save you out of the judgment of the Lord. No one can. Not your mom, not your dad. Nobody can. This is why you want to fear the Lord. You cannot escape the judgment of the Lord, man. This is this is serious. You cannot escape the judgment of Yahweh Bashimashai. You can't escape it. You can have a PhD. That's not gonna that's not gonna do shit. You can't escape the judgment of the Lord, man. You can't. Got another precept too. Isaiah 45 and verse 6. Isaiah 45 and 6. It says that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. So there's no one else, man, but Yahweh. Verse 7. I form light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all things. So the Lord is in control of life, good, death, and evil, and the Lord can kill you. Yes, you can't escape the judgment of the Lord. You can't. <clears throat> you can't escape the judgment of the Lord. Proverbs 16 and uh, 4. It says, the Lord have made all things for himself. Yes, the Lord have made all things for himself. Right? Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. See? So the Lord is in control of life, good, death, and evil. He's in control of good and evil. All right? Satan is an angelic tool used by the Heavenly Father to stir up stuff on the left hand side. He does things for the he does the he does the things for the Lord on the left hand side. Satan does. Alright? And he's not Satan doesn't do anything. He just follow the instructions of the Lord. The Lord does the killing. He can send the death angel after you. And he can kill you. You can get killed. This is why you want to fear the Lord. This is why you want to fear the Lord. You want to seek the Lord and you want to fear the Lord. All right? Because, hey, the Lord is intensifying his judgment. The Lord is intensifying his judgment. So, I ain't going to keep that long. But, hey, man, it don't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter about any of that. You can't escape the judgment of the Lord. If the Lord want to take you out, he'll take you out. So, hey, Lord, what is that so zedifying? I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Mahawa Kachodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to my elders and apostles of Great Millstone, because those are the men who I have learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the Servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And again, man, you want to repent. Israel, repent. All right, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, repent. Because the Lord is intensifying his judgment. Shalom.